today I want to wrap the message we started. So this should be like part three. We started with building a relationship, meaningful relationship. And then last week we went a little bit further and talked about uh, feet worship, which is part of fellowship. In fact, I would want you to discuss that in your home cells. The feet. Na muangalia ne wote munaangalia mtu akona mugu aina gani in that fellowship because it's your responsibility to wash those feet isn't it yeah. washing one another's feet what is that fellowship isn't it that's fellowship relationships that's what we dealt with last sunday that's uh, part two. so today i want to wrap it up with that one and uh, just looking at that part the communion of the Holy Ghost, amen, or the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That's where I want us to begin. We talk a lot about the blood of Jesus, even in our prayer, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, isn't it? Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one who functions in the body of Christ just the way your blood functions in your system in your body system we know how blood works in the body system uh, when you look at what the blood does in the body you know there's a lot that your blood will do and I will show you Kidogo. But the Holy Spirit, the Jesus Christ has a body. The Bible says the church is the body of Christ on earth. Amen. Now that blood, that church body of Jesus also has blood that works in it. That's what we normally call the blood of Jesus. Now today, I want you to you know what, to demystify what that thing, blood, because you, you don't see it anywhere. The blood of Jesus was shed 2,000 years ago. So how is it working today? So when you say the blood of Jesus, you are actually talking about the operation and the function, functioning of the Holy Spirit in the church today. The Holy Spirit does to the body of Jesus what your blood does to your body every day. Exactly what that blood in your body does to your physical body is what the Holy Spirit does into the spiritual body, your spiritual life as a believer. Praise God. And that's why it is mandatory that a Christian be filled with the Holy Ghost if you are going to live on earth. You cannot be a Christian without the Holy Ghost. Of course, you can get saved, but you will fall. Unless you die that day, you got saved and you go to heaven. It is not possible to function without blood. Not possible. Neither can the spiritual body function without the spirit, the blood of Jesus. It is just like that. Amen. Now, fellowship. When you say the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, it means Him, that is the Holy Ghost, in you, and then Him out of you to your brother or to your sister. That's the relationship. Him in you, and then Him out of you into someone else. That's how he works. I don't know whether you're getting that. Are you getting that? Him in you, then him out of you, into another, into your brother or into your sister. Now, that happens through words. Words. In 
the spirit, all transactions take place through words. In the spirit, everything is done by words. There is nothing like working with hands. In the spirit, things are done through words. So fellowship here means the spirit of God working from me into another person through words and from that other person to me through words. Even in the realms of demonic forces, satanic forces, they also do things through words. It's all about words. Words in the spirit are alive. There is no word that is dead. All words are alive. That's why if somebody calls you a fool, if you don't counter it, you will be a fool. That's why as a parent, you cannot call your child a fool. Because if you do that, you have created a what? A fool. Words are living. Words are alive. In the spirit, whether demonic realm or, or spiritual realm, that is uh, Christ, in Christ. So, as we interact with each other, it is about spirit to spirit. Amen? As we fellowship with one another, it is spirit to spirit. Now, that is what Paul is saying. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That is the Spirit of God in me, bringing life into me through you and bringing life to you through that fellowship, that kind of a relationship. Amen. Are you getting that? Look at Colossians, Colossians 3. Colossians chapter 3. I want you to understand that and then I show you something else. Colossians 3.16. It says this. Let the word of Christ, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So, then what happens after that? The word is in me richly. Sindio? with all wisdom. So after that, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Are you seeing that? Ministry to one another. That is spirit to spirit. Spirit from me to you, spirit from you to me. Amen. So the word, the word of Christ, richly dwelling in me, and then the spirit of God effects that through the body of Christ. That is, the spirit of God flows through the body of Jesus just the way your blood flows through your system. Amen. And doing several things that we are going to mention, but it's important that you understand that, that just as blood does in your physical body, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit does to the spiritual body. So when we talk about the blood of Jesus, we are talking about the Holy Spirit. Many of us have not known uh, that fact. Now let me take you to Exodus 30 and see exactly what this is. And from verse 22. Exodus 30 from verse 22. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also, take for yourself quality spices. You mark the word quality spices. This one says principal spices. King James says principal spices. That's the best. Amen. The best. Take for yourself quality spices. 500 shekels of liquid mud. Half as much sweet smelling cinnamon. 250 shekels. 250 shekels of sweet smelling cane. 500 shekels of cassia. 
according to the shekel of the sanctuary and a heem of olive oil and you shall make from this a holy anointing oil an ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer it shall be a holy anointing oil praise god now look at from verse 26 says with it you shall anoint the tabernacle of meeting and the ark of the testimony that is you will anoint everything everything now can you list down those principle he calls them uh take for yourself quality spices those prince spoke in james saying principle spices can we list them down because god specifically mentions them he did not tell moses to think he gave him what to do which one so number one he says pure mar 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 is m y r r h pure mar number two he says sweet cinnamon three sweet calamus four cassia five olive oil so he tells him you will make you will beat through through beating through the beating <laughs> verse 25 you shall make from this a holy anointing oil an ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer that is the best according to a, the best perfumer and it shall be a holy anointing oil so he tells him make a perfume out of those things now the lord if you continue reading we don't have time to read all of it he was so specific about that he tells moses let such a mixture never be seen anywhere else except this one i have told you let no one else make another one so the only thing that will be made and will be considered is this one that i have told you to make no one should imitate it in fact he says if anyone makes another that person should be killed he should die so god protected it amen ni kama ile kama today we say ni kupaten is it kupaten something so you invent something and you put a law no one else should come up with something like that so god did that don't make it don't make another one like this this oil was a unique mixture unique in the sense that there wasn't any other that had ever been designed like that god himself came up with a design now so they were warned not to make another one don't imitate don't imitate it and it should not be used anywhere else except within the tabernacle itself you need to mark that only within the tabernacle it should anoint everything and this was the rule all that which functioned in the tabernacle was to be touched with this oil that is anointed with this oil and whatever was not anointed was not acceptable for service and there was nothing else that smelled like this oil that is good for you to notice no other smell had ever been uh, smelt anywhere by anybody except i mean before this one so it was called the anointing oil praise god and i think at that point i should uh, give a warning to those of you who go buying oil from preachers ile ya bitco unajua wananunuanga hii mna wanuzanga ile ya bitco inanunuliwa hapa bitco alafu mnaambiwa israel no na wewe umenunua na umeweka kwa bag yako saa hii ukifikiria ilitoka Israel something is wrong with you <laughs> amen wacheni kwenda kununua hizo oil na mnaziona kwa tv tu si ndio na preacher anasema ikiwa haina picha yangu 
is not genuine. Now, those preachers are practicing witchcraft. And if you bought, you let enter kutupia. I will help you kutupa your kitu. You are playing games. I want to show you where to buy oil. Amen. I'm going to show you. So, unataka oil? Takuonesha where to buy. Today. Praise God. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you cannot use an anointing oil, but you can buy anything, in, including a lianto, and use. If you want, it's okay. Lakini ya kuuziwa mafuta, that is witchcraft. In fact, you are a witch already, if you have that. And may the Lord save you. Amen? Tell your neighbor, may the Lord save you yeah, from that from that witchcraft. No? Because some of you are buying things. You buy, in fact, you buy even water. No, you buy even water. You buy even water. You know? Never buy any material for prayer. Never. Never. At the mutu anakupatia, anakuuzia wende utumie for prayer. That person is a witch. You are getting into witchcraft yourself. That is not from heaven. <laughs> Amen. So the Lord said, never make another one like this. It's so clear. And yet we keep making others claiming it is this one. So nothing was allowed into the service of God without being touched with this oil. There were many other oils used later on, but it was not this one. This one was not supposed to be made again. It was just this one. And then the Lord preserved it and kept it, and he said he doesn't want anything like that. If you come up with that thing, he will kill you. Praise God. Now, considering the items used, each, each of those items... Each one of them had a specific solution to a human body. The problems in a human body. Each one of them. They had some properties that were necessary for the health, the welfare of a human body. So that oil, when it touched anything in the tabernacle, it was a symbol or it meant wholeness, wholeness of that thing. Whatever was touched by that oil, anointing oil, was considered whole before the Lord, acceptable, purified, ready for the service of God. That's why Moses was told, anoint the items in the tabernacle. Amen. Because in that oil were properties that we can call healing properties. Dealing with the human body. Now, this oil was the perfect picture. Or in, in, the, in the Old Testament we say God uses shadows to teach us spiritual realities. Now, that anointing oil was a shadow of the person we call the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ today. Amen. Now, we see Jesus in the Old Testament, but in different forms. He appears as a rock. Amen. He also appears like a tree. He appears like what? He appears as a cloud in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit was represented here as oil, what was called the anointing oil, which simply means he is the complete solution, the final solution to the body of Christ. That is why you must be filled. So what I want to do now what I want to show you is let's examine 
these ingredients that made the anointing oil, this specific anointing oil, so that you can understand the message. I've told you we are wrapping up on this issue of relationships, meaningful relationship. Let's examine these things. One, all of them were living plants, living plants, not dead, not dead things, not stones or anything. As much as the Lord showed me, uh, whatever he created is alive. There's nothing dead, nothing. Even soil, you take a stone, it's alive. Unless a human hand tampered with it. But anything that is the way God created it is alive. Praise God. Now, all these things were living plants. And they were all medicinal. All of them. There's something they were doing to the body. If you consumed any of them, it had something to do with the health of the body. And that is very important. For us to note, they mostly had to do with sustaining life, to keep the life going, which is a beautiful picture of what happens when the Holy Spirit comes. As long as blood is running in your system, there is health. Amen? A lot of purification takes place when your blood is functioning. You don't go to, let's look at the human blood, human blood. The blood in your body right now, you know all of you have blood here, Sindio? All of you have blood. Now, that blood, what it does is that it carries nutrients from the food that you eat. It takes from the food like vitamins or minerals or sugar or proteins, and then takes, I was reading the other time, you know, even in preaching, kuna research. Sindio? Yeah, you have to do a lot of research for you to be able to preach. Ndiyo wache kuubiri, Zacchaeus was a short man. No, you have to do some research, kido. Amen. Now, and I realize that a human body is cells. Millions. In fact, they are saying trillions of cells in the body. Now, each of those cells needs nutrients from the food that you eat. It is the work of the blood to carry those nutrients into the cells, to feed the cells. Amen. And then, as the cells are fed, they grow. So you find yourself a little bit taller than? So I don't know, I cannot explain why some people are shorter than the others. And they eat. But <laughs> cells grow according to how? <laughs> Praise God. So the body of Jesus Christ the Bible calls us, we who are members of the body of Jesus, the Bible considers each one of us a cell in the body of Christ. That's why it says the body of Christ is one. Amen. Many cells, but one body. Amen. Each cell needs, needs spiritual nutrients. Today, we had Discipleship class, the topic was the importance of the word of God. The importance of the word of God. And the Bible tells us, well, the word of God is food to a believer. It is food to your soul. Now, as you read that word of God, or as you meditate in that word of God, you are consuming it the way your physical body takes food. Amen. Now, when you take it inside it finds someone known as the Holy Spirit who acts as the body, I mean as blood in the body of Christ. Then the Holy Spirit 
takes the nutrients from that word and begins to feed every cell in the body of Christ. Amen. And that's what fellowship is all about, where with one another, as we speak to one another through psalms and spiritual songs, what are we doing? The Holy Spirit is feeding cells in the body of Christ. Amen. And we are growing in the image of Jesus Christ. So his work in the body of Christ is exactly what a human blood does to the body of a human being. And this is why we are told, pray and read the word. Pray and read the word. Because as you pray and you read the word, you are giving the Holy Ghost what he needs to cause growth into your life. Amen. So if you refuse to eat, you don't grow. Ask your neighbor how many, how many hours do you pray per week? <laughs> how much of the word do you eat compared to your food? Huh? Now, some of us are very healthy physically, but in the spirit, if we can look at you in the spirit, we will think you are living in Trukana, where there is no food. Because the Holy Ghost has nothing to use. Not that he is not there, but he has nothing to work with. So you have blood there, but it has nothing to pass on to the cells. Because you are not feeding. May the Lord help us. Praise God. So eat, so that the Holy Spirit may have something to build you. And to strengthen you. And not only you, you are a cell. You have to pass that one to another one. That's what fellowship is all about. So Paul says, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Now, that means there's no individualism. Individualism in the body of Christ is satanic. Let me address Kidogo, those of you who say, doesn't work like that in the body of Jesus. Amen. We are one in the body of Christ. And the Holy Spirit feeds you through your brethren. Those of you who never go for fellowships, you are sinning. Actually, you are sinning against your own body. Why? The Spirit feeds us through each other. As we talk with each other, as we share with one another, the Spirit flows from me to you and from you to another. Amen. That's the importance of fellowship. So, Mukiambiwa home cell, it is not because we want to build an empire. We are building the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. So are we together? Now let's see what this blood does to the body of Christ. Just the way your blood will work in your body. And I want us to use the very ingredients of uh, this anointing oil. And the first one was mar, Sindio. Man, and I think I mentioned this to the youth in the youth service. We talked Kidogo about it. Let's take man. You see, what does it do to the body of Christ? Number one, man was antiseptic. Antiseptic. What is antiseptic? Antiseptic, cleaning the, the body. That is, if mar was consumed, what it does to your body is to act as an antiseptic. Cleaning your body, bringing healing, praise God. Removing all the germs and bacteria that cause sicknesses and diseases in the body. And bringing healing, and that's what you find in Isaiah 61. The spirit of the sovereign God is upon me. Because he has anointed me 
to heal the broken hearted. Amen. To bind up the wounds of those who have been bruised like a bandage. Bandage them. Open the prison doors for those who are in prison. That is bringing healing to the people. The same God takes and puts it in the anointing oil to pass a message that this is what my spirit will do if you allow him to rule your life. Amen. Antiseptic. Number two, mar will repel fleas. and Many other insects. Fleas. So it deals with fleas in your life. It's a jigger of flea. Huh? The feet with jiggers. Eh? You need ma. <laughs> it repels fleas and drives away insects. And in the scriptures, demons are known as insects. They appear as insects. Did you know that? If you read the Bible, one of the appearances of demons is in the form of insects. And God has made a provision that those insects may not find a place in our lives. So he puts mar inside there. Amen. Another thing that it does is to prevent sunburn. Sunburn to keep your skin good. It is also a powerful antioxidant. These days, those who sell herbs, all of them have to say antioxidant for you to buy. Even the ones that are not. Ata ukiuziwa sukuma unambua powerful antioxidant. Because they know the necessity of purifying the body. Amen. But man was known as a powerful antioxidant. Another thing is man was used as a cure for cancer. Cure for cancer. Somebody said to me, I don't know how but I think it was true. He said cancer is cells eating each other. No? Yeah. Yeah. Cells standing against each other and consuming one another. Haven't you read Paul saying, if you bite each other, beware lest you are consumed one of another. And if you want a place where people eat each other, ni wapi? Church. This word backbiting, what does it mean? You know? <laughs> backbiting, it means eating somebody's back. You know? <laughs> yeah. If you talk about me against me to someone else and you're not telling me, what are you doing? You are back biting. So some of us in church have no backs. Your back has been eaten by your brethren. Now, to prevent the spirit of gossip and destroying each other's name in the house of God, the Lord has provided a cure. Amen. Because one of the things that destroys relationships and fellowships in church is this talking against each other in the house of God. And people are there and you can't talk to them. Unangalia mutu hivi, talk hapo, unaenda kugosi. About them. And you don't tell them. It means when it comes to the final what? The, the, the final stage of being possessed to be fully God's property which happens in the baptism of the Holy Spirit it means you have not arrived there. You don't have the spirit of God. So all these things, the issues, the diseases of backbiting, the diseases of fleas, 
in your life is because you have neglected the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life. Praise God. And lastly, mar was used as uh, he was used for skin care and aging and stopping the aging process. <laughs> so you are a youth na unalala kama mzee ameretire. Unaona hiyo tabia hiyo it means you lack what? <laughs> Honestly, because some of us, youth, the things you do should be done by waze amba walimaliza nini? Walimaliza. Something is lacking. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit is not being experienced in that life. You're just religious. May the Lord help you. Deal with your age. Umezoeka kushinda siku ile ulizaliwa. Amen. How do you come to church late and you are a youth? How? How? Something is something is not right. So to deal with that, God tells Moses, put mar there because it will cure that disease. Amen. Are we together? Okay, quickly we go to cinnamon. Cinnamon was also used. One of the things that cinnamon was used for, it was very effective at that time when Moses was being told this. That time, cinnamon was used for preventing vomiting. <laughs> wale wako na tabia ya kukula unatapika unakula unatapika hebu tupatie hebrews 4 verse 12 verse 2 hebrews 4 verse 2 unakula una unatapika for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that had it so the word of god is being preached but does not profit you why it is not finding faith required to retain it inside so you vomit it out so you ask a believer do you remember what we learned last sunday he doesn't know but he was in church How was the service? Good. Were you blessed? Yeah, I will tell you we were so blessed. What did the preacher say? Something. Sikumbuki vizuri lakini ilikuwa good. You know? <laughs> vomiting. The vomiting spirit. We hear but we can't retain it. We lose it. Vomiting. You need the touch of the Holy Spirit. Praise God to keep the fellowship going the other thing cinnamon was used for was to prevent diarrhea especially oral diarrhea we said things are done in the spirit through words sindio so diarrhea here is through the mouth If people begin to diarrhea here you will not be here. Churches are broken by mouths that diarrhea. <laughs> Relationships are broken by mouths that diarrhea. Praise God. Some of you wanadiangalia ni kama ni wewe ninaingilia. It is true ni wewe ninaingilia. So, najua unaweza kuniangalia kama umekasirika. Ndaendelea tu. Amen. It is a disease that must be dealt with. The blood purifies the body. Amen. It has to arrest those things and remove them. And get them get rid of them out of the body. The blood of Jesus which is the Holy Spirit does the same. 
to the body of Christ. Dealing with these diseases of oral diarrhea, gossip and uh, talking things that people should not be talking about. The other thing is to cure common cold. Masa you have noticed I have common cold. <laughs> Curing common cold. Aya. Another use for cinnamon was to cure loss of appetite. If you had no appetite, the cure that you would be given was cinnamon. Take cinnamon. I don't know whether the modern cinnamon works like that. See, you but I don't think the cinnamon we have today is as effective as this one's one. But if you have no appetite, so the cure for the loss of spiritual appetite is found in the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Why you keep eating and eating and eating. Those of you who only read your Bible on Sunday. You have no appetite for the word of God. You have more appetite for TikTok than, than the word of God. The other thing cinnamon was used for was for, uh, uh, to cure erectile dysfunction. Now, erectile dysfunction means no seed. You are seedless. You cannot reproduce. You have no seed. <laughs> you have no seed to give to anyone. And spiritually, we are supposed to be productive. Amen. Amen. Every believer spiritually is supposed to be active and productive, producing seed for the house of God. Many believers are suffering from erectile dysfunction. You cannot reproduce. You are finished. <laughs> Praise God. What you need is the Holy Spirit. A deep interaction with the Holy Spirit. That's what Moses was being told by God. Make sure whatever functions in my temple is touched with this oil. Amen. So whoever is going to function in the house of God, fruitfully, productively, must be under the anointing of the Spirit of God. There is no option. Amen. And if you are not spirit-filled, you need to pray, jump up and down and scream until you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Because without Him, you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. Amen. Calamus. The third one. Calamus. Let's do it quickly and then we'll stop. Remember, don't lose that. We are dealing with fellowships, relationships. Fellowships. Calamus. This was a root, actually. It was a root. It was used for cure for upset stomach. Cure na shida. Ya tumbo. Upset stomach. You are given calamus. The other thing is gas. If you have too much gas, the stomach. You know, if you have gas here, uku kutanza kunuka saiz, ndio? That kuna fellowships too, kuna nuka too. Church in a nuka. Because tumbo za watu zime. <laughs> zime fura. Wengine cannot digest. So unakuja church uki the fair. Wengine unakuja nini. <laughs> Nikubaya, I'm telling you. We need the Holy Ghost. To heal the church. Amen. We need the presence of the Holy Ghost. So this anointing oil was much more than what we think. It was the Holy Spirit himself functioning in the body of Christ. Amen. We together, ulcers was dealt with. 
by Calamus. Arthritis was dealt with by Calamus. By the way, Calamus was the root that was burnt by you know, these people like magicians or spiritists who would want to travel into spiritual realms and start seeing things in the spirit. Eh? You know, that happens, whether through Satanism and all this. But the, the thing that they would burn, come on, Indians burn that. You've, you've seen something like that. Something that they burn, when you smell it, it shifts you into some spiritual trance. This is what they were using at that time. And God says, put that one there. And the reason why God has put it there is only through the Holy Spirit that you can start interacting with the spiritual realm. That's how you can discern God. Amen. When you allow the Spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit, the spiritual realms becomes alive in you. You can start hearing things in the Spirit. You start seeing in the Spirit. You start sensing things, discerning in the spirit. All these things cannot happen unless you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? So you have no access to the spirit, to the uh, things of God without the Holy Ghost. I, the other one was Kesia. Kesia. Kesia was a spice. It was actually used for food, eh? A spice, a sweet smelling, aromatic thing. That's where the name Casey comes from. That's why I call my daughter Casey. You know, a queer perfume. So you come away when in Jangili, where's your wheel? Praise God. Tumeambiwa in the morning kwa discipleship class tumeambiwa hata ukipeana jina kwa mtoto upeana jina mzuri <laughs> Amen Praise God <laughs> So kesia was very aromatic and sweet and refreshing Unajua kuna some ushapewa perfume ukaanza kusneeze Umetumia perfume hapa usikia mtu ako na perfume anaanza kusneeze inakusumbua <laughs> Na alafu unaumwa na kichwa Kesia was refreshing and reviving you feel fresh when you smell it amen And that is what is called the fellowship of the Holy Spirit it refreshes when you gather together in the presence of a people filled with the Holy Spirit you leave that place a refreshed person. Amen. Depression goes because you touch someone who knows the Holy Spirit. Uh, confusion goes because you are with someone who knows the Holy Spirit. But there are people you talk with, they are saved, yes. But after that talking, you feel like your spirit is disturbed. Something is wrong. You feel no. Hapa kuna mambo ingi mzuri. Why? You lack one of the principal spices that God wants in his body. Amen. And that's fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, it is impossible, especially church, where people come from different directions, different backgrounds, different tribes, different cultures, and we come together here to become one flesh. You need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Otherwise, it cannot work. It will not work. I was in one church one time where some women, some women, one of my friends was a pastor there, an assistant pastor. And some women, members of his community, tribe, would go to him and tell him, you know, katika hii kanisa, wewe tu ndiyo wetu. Wewe tu ndiyo mtoto wetu hapa. And the guy is not even the head of the church. Yeah, any pastor too hapo, but already in the fellowship, there is already a group that is divided. 
all they are seeing is nani mtoto wao now if you are like that you never saw the blood of jesus you are not washed by the blood of jesus you are washed by the blood from the other cross yo unajua kuna hiyo ingine hata sio ya ule aliokoka kuna huyo mwingine hakuokoka na pia ilikuwa na damu may the lord have mercy praise the lord the fellowship of the holy spirit is supposed to refresh is supposed to make us one it is impossible that we can produce the unity required without the presence of the holy spirit that's why we need him amen that's why we need him we need to surrender to him without him no fellowship and those who do not have the fellowship of the holy ghost i'm telling you tuko church tu lakini wewe kazi yako ni kuteta ku complain murmuring nini ile ile akina nani those guys from is, the tribe of israel in the in the wilderness unajua kwa wilderness every time is just murmuring and complaining akuna everything ni makosa you know wakipewa mana wanakula wakishiba wanaanza kusema kwani ni mana tu <laughs> hakuna kitu kingine tupatie nyama <laughs> wanapewa nyama wanakula wanapigania paka Mungu akakasirika akasema sasa mtakula itoke kwa nosi you know <laughs> a spirit of murmuring in fact if you know a murmuring next to you please stay away from them that spirit will kill you it's a terrible spirit it does not give room for the fellowship of the holy spirit when murmuring comes in you stop seeing what god is doing you are seeing things that are not being done you know that's all you will be seeing and if you want to know you are a murmurer you check Com- compare look at it are you seeing progress or you are seeing what we are not doing you know that one will tell you please note it there and then you will know whether you are murmuring or not just note it in your own whatever then you will know yourself when you look at a church like this are you seeing people that are making progress or you are seeing kwa nini hiyo hawakufanya kwa nini hiyo hawakufanya kwa nini hii white imefika hapa no kwa nini hii jiongezeka ikafika na pale hivyo kwa nini hii kitu ni ya green hawakuweka yellow hapa you always seeing what was not done ni, ni ile example watu hupenda kutumia wanasema you don't say the, the glass is half full it is half empty you're a member avoid such people praise god they do not encourage you towards building unity church is supposed to build unity and in church when your brother is weak you become their strength that's the fellowship of the holy spirit when your brother does not know you help them to know it when your brother is falling you help them to rise up that was fellowship of the holy spirit is in church within the fellowship of the holy spirit no one is better than the other we are all sons of god we are helping each other to make it praise god and if you are like that you can pray sindio you can really pray for people there is a church it was here in makongeni it was one of those churches teaching a lot on deliverance deliverance generational curses you need to bring 50000 to deliver you from the curse of your grandfather no. a, a lot of that and that man was my friend by the way and i, I had he passed on a few like two, two or three years ago he passed on now in that church one time he was teaching on deliverance and he took people through a deliverance class and one woman here too from heaven's gate we were not here that time we were pale a guest house one woman felt like we are also not delivering her so she needs to she needs to go for deliverance because we are not delivering her 
And probably hata wewe uko hapa unasikia we are not delivering you so you feel like you can visit Manyuru. No. But uh, so she went. When she went there deliverance did not take place. So she came back after giving 50,000 which she should have given us for rent anyway. So she came back minus she came back with a demon minus 50,000. You know, so that was a problem. But one of the things she found there, one woman did not have the 50,000 what which was needed for deliverance. So she said, I only have, I think it was 30. She said, I only have 30. She was now negotiating with the man of God in the church. And the man of God asked the people, said, "Who you anasema hana nini? Ana 50,000." tumfanye aji akuwe delivered wakasema hapana hapana sisi tumetoa <laughs> sisi tumetoa 50 hata yeye atoe 50 you know church that is church now what other evidence do you need to show you that you are under satanic spirit in such a fellowship you cannot be prayed for because you do not have a friend of mine visited went to the, her pastor i'm not going to tell you because probably you came from there no hapa tu hapa tu karibu na town she was going to work she got a job so she was told before you go for this work you need training and the company was going to train her so she goes to the pastor and she said thank you for uh, being with me being my pastor god has blessed me given me a job i'm going for training So I will go on Monday. I want to come so that you pray for me. Then I go with your blessing. And the pastor said when you come come with 10,000. And the lady said, I don't have 10,000. I'm not even employed. Where am I going to get 10,000? The pastor said, if you don't come with the 10,000, don't come. I'm not going to pray for you. And it was like that. And he refused and he couldn't pray because she did not have 10000 <laughs> god of mercy okay now those are the some some of the satanic things that happen in a place where something some spirit is present but not the spirit of god where the spirit of god is when one is weak you become their strength Amen. When one is falling down you raise them up. That unity he says you will chase alone you can chase what? A thousand, eh? But then when you are united how many? 10,000. That's the unity we need in the house of God. But it cannot happen unless we learn how to subject ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, let's look at this the last one here. Olive oil The reason why I'm going through this I want you to know that the anointing oil was actually the holy spirit being represented. Amen. The holy spirit. So if you walk in your bottle maybe they walked with this thing in the bottles in their pocket for a long time but in Acts chapter 2 that thing ended. The real person came. Now he lives in us. Amen. Olive oil olive oil was used for preserving the aroma You take your time to go through those things alone after this because now I cannot explain everything. But take your time check this thing preserving the aroma. Have you read in Corinthians we are the aroma of Christ? <laughs> we are the perfume of Christ. Everywhere we go people smell something. Amen. To the righteous to the holy we smell life. to wicked people we smell death what does that mean we pronounce judgment to them do you know you can live so holy when a sinner looks at you they become afraid because you remind them of hell and you are walking right with god the glory of god is in your face when a sinner looks at you you remind him he is going to hell 
That's what the Bible means. We smell death to some people. Amen. But to those who love Jesus, we smell life. Amen. Uh, you know, I was, I was about to finish. Thank you, Jesus. Sasa unaenda wapi? By the way, I love our service that takes place when it is raining. I love it. I love that service. I love that service. Okay. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to go further. We are finishing. So that when it's still raining, we can have a few minutes to talk to God. Sindio? Okay. The other use for olive oil was soap, body cleanser. Use it to cleanse the body. Amen. Utoa <laughs> uchafu. Like soap. Clean yourself. What a wonderful function of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Ukijipata ukiwa mchafu, submit yourself to the Holy Ghost. He cleanses you. The Bible says, by the way, I think, I think, let, let me show you that verse. Let me show you that verse. John. First John. There's a wonderful verse in First John. First John chapter 1 from verse 6. First John chapter 1 from verse 6. Look at it. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light <laughs> as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. <laughs> now look at it. If we choose to walk in the light, that is being honest and genuine. Now that is in spite of your weaknesses. You have chosen to walk in light. Be genuine. Be honest one to another. Don't be a crook. You may have all your weaknesses and failures. But the Bible says, the blood of Jesus. You know, the fact that that brings us into fellowship with one another because the light brings us together. The fact that we enter into that fellowship, that relationship, the blood of Jesus automatically cleanses us from all sin. Amen. The blood just cleanses. The blood just purifies. It just purges you. Do you see here? There isn't even what? It is not even talking about repent. No. It's just walk in the light and be in fellowship with one another. Amen. Just that fellowship, as you talk with one another, the blood just cleanses. You are just cleansed. Even thoughts, evil imagination, appetites that are wrong, lusts that are burning within you, as long as you are in fellowship with one another, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, they are just purged by the blood. Amen. They are just dealt with by the blood. So this is the best way to find deliverance. Get yourself into fellowship with spirit-filled brethren. You will find your deliverance. Amen. We may not make you fall. <laughs> but the fellowship itself brings healing. We heal one another. Amen. So the body is cleansed. It was also used as oil for the lamp. Oil for the lamp. Aina ile, unajua ile kitu inaweko na wafuta ya ta. Inaitua ni suit. Ni suit. Olive oil does not have suit. It's clean. Kabisa. In this fellowship, usha enda fellowship, unatoka hapo kama uko na suit. Umepaku wa mavitu. <laughs> you need the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And lastly, 
is aromatic when burning. Sweet aroma when burning. The presence of the Holy Ghost is an aroma. It is sweet. It refreshes. A fellowship with the Holy Ghost revives. It restores. And that's the meaning of he restores my soul. He restores my soul. Thank you.